Renogy Phoenix 200 is a power station. What they used to call a solar generator, which I always thought was a dumb term, but this one's called a portable power station. It's the Renogy Phoenix 200. It's 222 watt hours, and we're going to talk about it right now. Ham Radio 2.0 reviews news and how-tos of things that are new in Ham Radio. This was sent to me by Renogy because I bought a Renogy Phoenix small suitcase type device. They called it a Renogy Phoenix Elite. It was a suitcase type device that opened up. It had a solar panel in it and it had an inverter built in it with a couple of 110 volt uh, AC plugs and some USB stuff and a light on the side of it, blah, blah, blah. And they stopped making that one. And, and that thing works great. I still have it. It's out in the garage somewhere. I tried to find it before this recording, and I, I, I don't have it right now. It works fine. Nothing wrong with the way it works. But the screen on it never worked. It's incredibly dim. So I filed a warranty thing with it. And they said, hey, we don't make that one anymore. Can we send you the new one? I said, yes, and this is what we got. So that's the Renogy Phoenix 200 power station. You can see right here it's got two 110-volt ports on the front of it. It's got a 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter, two quick charge USB-C, or I'm sorry, USB-A connectors. I always call these USB-C connectors. They're USB-A connectors, but they're QC quick charge 3.0. You can tell because they're blue. Presumably they're, I haven't actually tested these, but presumably they're, they're correct. Renogy's colors are blue, so hopefully they just didn't make them blue because of that, because QC 3.0 should be blue. Maybe that's something we'll test later. Anyway, so this is uh, the two USB-A 3.0 connectors, uh, USB-C. This is an actual USB-C connector. I believe it's 60 watts, not 90 watts, unfortunately. And this is an input for your solar panels. It comes with an AC power adapter, so you just plug that right in and it charges up. The cool thing about this screen right here is it'll tell you how many hours you have left to discharge. And while you have the AC charger plugged in, it'll tell you how many hours left you have to charge. So let's check this out a little bit closer. So I have an EcoFlow that has connections on the front, the side, and the side. So it's very cumbersome to use that power station in the truck. If you're sitting on a ta picnic table somewhere, then great. Nothing wrong with that. But I like the fact that all of these connections are on one side. So I can stick this in a corner somewhere in my vehicle or in a tent or in, uh, you know, maybe the room uh, if my power goes out in my ham shack or whatever. I can stick this in a corner somewhere and not have to worry about having connections on both sides of it. So I like that. I like the fact that all the connections are on the front of it. I'm going to plug this in. I'm just going to plug in my freaking phone. And all I want to really do is show you guys how the screen changes when I plug my phone in. Right there. Now the phone's going to start charging. All right, so we're at 100% battery right now because I charged it up before I started this video. It's got 18 hours, 19 hours of battery life left. It's changing. You can see it now it says 20. It said 17 when I said that. So this is the number of hours or minutes of battery. It says hours right there beneath the nine. You can see that. This is the number of hours I have left before this battery dies at this current charge rate. My phone is 82%, no, 92% full, and it only has 22 minutes left on its charge. So it's not going to take 19 hours to charge the phone, but if I, that's just how much battery life is in there. So once this is charged, this thing will actually turn itself off. I guess that's good and bad because if you want to keep something charged, if I wanted to keep my phone charged and come back to it a few hours later, you know, this might turn itself off and then the phone would start to discharge. So I don't know if I like that or not. There might be a setting in there where you can change that. I don't know, but that is the way that this works. And so far, I used this when I was at the Belton Ham Expo in October. And then that night we went to, well, the next night we went to the Texas Avid Outdoors Overland event. And I, I and we camped out there and I used this to charge my phone and charge my radio. I got a couple of radios that are USB-A chargers. I, in fact, I put a picture on Instagram of this thing charging my Yaesu FT5D with the USB-A charger. Worked great. Work great. Uh, of course, the uh, ID52 natively charges via micro USB. I've got a micro USB. And, um, I don't remember if it's after. I bought it at HRO. So there's this there's this cable you can buy at HRO that's USB A on one end, and small barrel connector made for the FT FT3 and FT5 on the other end. I don't remember if Yezu makes it or if it's aftermarket, but HRO sells it. So go go check that out. So I can charge both my ID52 and my FT5 on. USB-A. It's not as fast as charging in the wall, and I could plug this in right here if I wanted to, but, you know, 
maybe sometimes I want to charge it via USB. And I've just, if I plug it in overnight and go to sleep, by the next morning it's fully charged. If I'm using the 110 plug, because there's only two of them on it, if I'm using the 110 plug uh, charger for to charge, let's say, an electric blanket if it's really cold outside. If I'm using it to charge my laptop, charge my laptop, because my laptop only has 110 volt. Although my laptop does charge via USB-C, I don't know if this will charge it. That's something in the future I'm going to have to check. So, so far, really happy with this device. It's lasted, I've charged it down and up half a dozen times or something like that, and it's always done really well. It's small and lightweight. It's about two-thirds the size of the EcoFlow one that I bought on Amazon a while back. It's got this carrying handle on the top of it, so it's easy to carry around, and um, it's just really compact. I've been really happy with this device, and I would like to test one of their larger devices. So maybe someday I'll get my hands on one of that. But put a comment below. Let me know what you think. Which power pack do you have? I've been doing a lot of research on power packs lately. There's a lot of power packs out there. The ones I've mainly been looking at is, is Renogy, EcoFlow, Blue Eddy, Jackery, and Goal Zero. And out of those five, and there's two or three other kind of what I call off brands. Now, I've got an off brand in my truck right now that was sent to me. And I love that thing. More to come on that later. I want to spill the beans on that yet. Out of all the ones I just named, which if you have researched power packs at all, you should recognize most, if not all, of those names. Out of all the ones I named, Goal Zero is the only one that has Anderson Power Poles as an output on the front of the device. That's going to be fun to test. The main question I have about this, reviewing it on a ham radio channel, is how much RFI does it cause? If any. Maybe none. Maybe it pukes all over the place. Who knows? With a wideband receiver, a DC to daylight receiver such as an IC705, you can test that pretty easily. So guess what? I'm going to have to do that. I don't have my IC705 with me right now. So I'm going to put the camera on pause. I'm going to go get my IC705. And then we're going to test it. And we're, we're going to plug in an AC outlet to it. And we're going to plug in a DC outlet to it like it has now, a USB. And I'm going to see what kind of RFI this thing produces with an IC705 sitting right next to it. Okay, I wanted to bring the Renogy Phoenix 200 out to the hunting lease and show you what it looks like with the wideband receiver like the ICOM IC705 next to it. Right now, power it on, power this on. Let me point the camera at it. So I've got this plugged in right now and you see it's at 100% and I've got my R finder plugged into the AC. The AC is on, which hopefully you can see the white light right there. The power is on or, or else the screen wouldn't be on. And you can see there's no RFI being interfered on the band right now now here's something that's really fun something we have to constantly deal with at field day and winter field day i'm going to start my generator there we go now look at that that's generator rfi and when i first plugged this up i'm like okay What's interfering? What's going on here? Because I got a lot of things plugged up over here. Okay, I've got this battery charger. It's charging my BioNO. I've got Starlink on right now. But you can't tell what's what because, <laughs> because of the generator. So as soon as I kill the generator, rem magic remote control, boom. There it goes away. So that might be a story for another day. That might be a... Uh, Yeah, that might be a test and a video for another day. But the important thing is that this thing is plugged in, charging my R Finder phone. That's the red but uh, the red light right there. Okay, the AC is on, the power is on. I can turn the cigarette lighter adapter on by with this button right here. There we go. Now that's on. There's nothing plugged into it, but we're not seeing any RFI at all in the radio which is fantastic. That means, for all intents and purposes, this thing sitting next to the IC705 is RFI quiet. Look at that. Okay, I got the generator running. And there's no RFI. Turns out, I did a little, well, you can see a little bit. You see those wide, light blue bands in the band right there? That, that, is, the, that is the generator. Obviously, it's not as full and as solid as it was before. The real cause of the RFI is this LifePo4 smart well. It'll do lithium, AGM, lead acid, and LifePo4. It's a 20 amp charger, and I've got it 
set on LiPo 4 right now charging my BioNO. So once I plug this back in, it'll beep. That comes on, boom. See that? So the battery charger is the cause of the RFI. Now, in a perfect world, you're not gonna be using a battery charger, an AC powered battery charger to charge your battery while you're operating radio. What's the point? Your ba radio's battery powered, you charge your battery the night before and use the battery to run the radio. So you don't need that. But that thing's noisy. That's one of my favorite battery chargers I've found because it has this nice screen on it. It tells you what it's doing. If you can see that. There we go. But that's where the RFI is coming from. Still, not the Renegy Phoenix 200.